Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Teleological Arguments for the Existence of God. Now, we have finally reached the last teleological argument we're going to be doing, so we're going to do a special new series to kind of finish things up, entitled, An Intergalactic Obliteration of the Cosmic Fine-Tuning Argument. So it seemed to me that the cosmic fine-tuning argument was pretty much the strongest of all of the teleological or design arguments for the existence of God. So what I wanted to do was instead of just kind of doing one level of debate on it, of offering the argument and offering objections to it. I want to take a look at the argument, some objections to it, some responses to those objections, and then further objections to the argument. There's still going to be a lot of problems with this argument here, but it seems to be, of all of the design arguments, one of the most viable. So I wanted to spend a little more time with it. We're going to start off with just an explanation of the cosmic fine-tuning argument as it stands, as it's been presented. Then we're going to look at the probably most common objection to the cosmic fine-tuning argument, known as the multiverse objection. This is probably the one you've heard the most often. Then we'll look at the poker game response to specifically the multiverse objection to the cosmic fine-tuning argument with Alvin Planinga and George Schlesinger. Then we're going to look at some problems with that response. We're going to call that video Planinga's elaborate poker equivocation. We're going to look at a number of objections to that as a response to the multiverse objection. After that, we're going to look at cosmic fine-tuning and the Monty Hall fallacy. In that video, we're going to take on a couple of objections that address the cosmic fine-tuning argument itself without the multiverse objection. So basically, it's addressing problems in that argument in a different way other than the multiverse objection. Then we're going to look at the life as we know it objection. This is also going to be an objection directly to the cosmic fine-tuning argument that has nothing to do with the whole side debate of the multiverse objection and planning as poker game response. Then we're going to look at the confirmation fine-tuning argument and Bayesian epistemology. Basically, this is kind of a toned-down version of the cosmic fine-tuning argument, and it uses Bayesian epistemology to kind of give you the intuition that even if you couldn't show for certain the conclusions of the argument, maybe it could show to confirm those conclusions, that our evidence could in some way confirm that conclusion. Well, we're going to, of course, look at the problem of the priors for the confirmation fine-tuning argument, because as it's going to be relying on pieces of Bayesian epistemology, it, of course, is going to fall prey to the biggest problem for Bayesian epistemology, which is the problem of the priors. Then we're going to look at kind of a reductio ad absurdum called Ed's Perfect Design, where we're going to look at some kind of problems with the design argument structure in general, specifically the cosmic fine-tuning argument structure. And finally, we're going to look at a video which, in my mind, would be sufficient to just get rid of all of your thoughts about the cosmic fine-tuning argument to begin with, which is why cosmology is not science, with Karl Popper. So, that was, if you missed it, the cosmic fine-tuning argument, the multiverse objection, the poker game response, the elaborate poker equivocation, the Monty Hall fallacy, life as we know it, objection, the confirmation fine-tuning argument, the problem of the priors for fine-tuning, cosmology is not science. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.